Okay. So, I might end up putting this on YouTube, so if I do, Twitch chat, say hello to YouTube. YouTube, come say hello to Twitch chat whenever you can, whenever I'm streaming. But uh, these are, this is an example of a 30-minute VOD review, so you, if you guys watch my stream a lot, you can redeem, you can redeem your points for this. So this is what you get. This is, your, this is your channel points money being spent. So, we're reviewing, uh, we're reviewing Silk. So, Katarina, Isera, and uh, I've already seen the goal graph, so I kind of know that this is a big throw, and also the score. But essentially going to try and hopefully clean up some of the mid game and not like when you're ahead that far on Katarina, the goal should be to just close out quickly and cleanly so that, you know, you can get ahead in the next game, I guess you can go next game fast um, because when you're this far, far ahead in Katarina, it should be pretty straightforward. But I'm going to pause real quick and do what I normally do at the beginning of these games. Um, we don't have Silk in Discord, but I'm just going to start with team comps. Let's just go over team comps real quick. So... What do you think about their team comp? What do you think about your team comp? Any thoughts you have? You think you also got solo killed in lane? It's all right. Katarina getting solo killed in lane isn't terrible if you can bounce back with roams. 30 minute flaming session. Yep. That's what you get for your points. So you'll have most trouble versus Volibear and Fiora. Okay. So yeah, I agree. Volibear can be a bit of an issue for Katarina be a bit of an issue he's tanky he's hard to burst down and he has a stun on demand whenever you go into melee range you say fiora so fiora shouldn't necessarily be a massive problem for you the main issue she poses is she can push waves and she can hit towers very quickly like she can she can basically just run top lane and then just if she's strong enough to duel you it's very hard to stop her from pushing under tower but you shouldn't necessarily you shouldn't necessarily ever have to deal with a fiora 1v1 that's your scion's job this game right okay that's your Scion's job this game. Uh, it's not ideal for Scion either, but he's a better candidate to wave clear and stop Fiora from doing what she wants than you are in general. If you are actually ahead, however, Fiora has nothing to stop you from just one-shotting her, right? She has very, very little in the way of dealing with a Katarina who's, who's further ahead of her to jump on her, which means she can't step up to the wave. So if Katarina is very far ahead, it's actually okay to lane into Kata. Sorry, for you into, to lane into Fiora, rather. Because, I mean, what is she going to do? She can't wave clear, she can't step up, and you should, in theory, have, you know, kill pressure on her. So that's one thing. And then the second thing I can see is your Ash is called Challenged Ash. Great name, fantastic stuff. Um, okay, that's kind of irrelevant, but the, <laughs> the next point I can see is they have a TF ult. Okay, they have a TFR. That's kind of important to keep track of. It's also going to be a really big deal of why this game is going to be a fiesta. I'm assuming a lot of people don't keep track of TF ult. And there's going to be a lot of random kills all over the map. You also have an Ash, another global. You have a Scion, a semi-global. And you have, um, well, Kaisa's semi-global once you get some levels. So there's a lot of, like, you got to be careful when you're on side lane this game. You can't just run around and be on side lane forever because you're going to get engaged on. So let's, let's take a look. Minions have spawned. Misery loves me. So um, I'm going to speed this up and we can see where, where they started and what you saw. Zoom out a tiny bit. Okay, so you can see your ball lane starting, and then, as always, every single lane should be paying attention to where the enemy ball lane shows up at the beginning of the game. Uh, so you can see they, they leashed, so you know where Volibear started red. So you know Volibear started le red, so what, do you, what, what do you exactly do you want to do with your wave and with your lane um, early game into the TF? Generally, TFs will play this matchup one way, and they just... You know, they will red card, they will either double red card or they will single red card the wave and they will shove you under tower. That's just how most TFs try to play the wave. Um, but knowing that, what do you think you should be scared of? This guy actually doesn't choose to do that. Okay, so TF is like semi slow pushing the wave. If you start farming with your Q, you could potentially like hold it in the middle. Um, which isn't terrible for you. It's not the end of the world if it's in the middle of the lane. But you do have to just be careful of Volibear. So when Volibear starts red, you just have to think of... Basically, identify where he starts. That's the first part. Okay, you have to identify the, the Volibear's start. And that's red buff. The second point, and that's the most important, that's the relevant point for you, is um, when is Volibear going to leave his jungle? Essentially, is he going to do it at level 3? Or is he going to do it at level 4? Those are the two questions you should ask, okay? So 
<laughs> Look asses. So Volver's gonna do either a, th a level three into a gank, or generally he'll just do a full level four clear and then go for a crab. So the best way I like to figure out whether a jungler is going to gank or not is first I look at my own lane. It's that simple. You just look at your lane and go, is like, am I going, going to be gankable? If Fallabar shows up at level three, what happens? Uh, is the wave going to be here? Is the wave going to be in the middle? Is the wave going to be here? I don't know. But you just have to think about it and figure out exactly what you're going to do if he level three ganks. Because you don't have a good jungler to counter gank. You have Zach, and Zach wants to just full clear. Second point is, okay, if he doesn't level 3 gank, which crab is he going for? That's the next big important question. So if Volibear is doing a level 4 into crab, he's cleared his whole bot side. He has to have cleared his whole bot side, otherwise he won't hit 4 by the time he finishes. So you'll know for sure he's on top side of the map. But at the end of the day, if he starts red buff, if he starts red buff, there is two options that will impact your lane that you basically need to keep track of, and that is, he will gank you from here after doing 3 camps bot side. Unlikely. I mean, it's, it's possible, but I wouldn't really worry about that. How do you stop that? Real simple. You just hug top side of the map. For the first minute, you can just, for a blaming phase, you can just chill and hug, to, hug the top side of the map. Because you know Volibear is doing red. If he's going to be coming through this way, you're safe. Right? You're totally safe. Yeah, you're right. You can get stun carded into level 2 gank. You are correct. So you should play safe, because there's, there's very little counterplay to that situation. Um, you don't have flash, so you just have to play a little bit back. Um, but once you feel comfortable that Volibear is probably not going to level th 2 or 3 gank you from red buff, then, well, you, uh, you probably know what I'm about to say, so what should you do? After you feel comfortable that Volley's has uh, like not going to gank you from this angle, uh, and you're like, okay, he's probably doing his blue now, what's the, what's the next stage of the laning phase? You were hugging topside, now where do you go? Again, very straightforward think, uh, like lo line of thinking, but you just have to kind of follow through with it. Exactly. You just lean the opposite side. Perfect. So you just lean the opposite side. Now keep in mind, um, you need to understand what your Zach also wants to do. It's pretty important. It's pretty important. Um, your Zach. So tell me exactly what's going to happen with your Zach. What, what do you expect him to do? Just by looking at, you know, where he starts. What do you think he's going to end up doing? So he's done blue and he's, he's on Gromp right now. Ba -da 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 -ba. He could get an angle on bot. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a mistake that you think that, and we need, to, we need to make sure you don't think that in the next game. Why do you think Zach would gank? Okay, so what is the consequences of a Zach? First of all, he needs to hit level 3. Okay, you need to understand that about Zach. He cannot gank at level 2. If he does, I guarantee you, even in gold, he should be pretty much out of the game in terms of farm. He's just going to be out of the game. Yeah, okay, good. So even after three camps, we do need to talk about why you, why you think he can gank. So after three camps, okay, he does three camps. He is going to be level three. He's going to be level three. Volibear is going to be top side of the map. What happens if he ganks ball lane right now? What happens if, if, if after he hits level three, he goes ball lane and ganks? Yeah, he just loses his entire top half of the jungle. Volibear's already done his red. He doesn't recover from that. Okay, he just doesn't recover from that. <laughs> it's just, that's just a, that's a jungle losing gank right there, okay? So, again, in gold, maybe this guy decides to switch his brain off and is like, yeah, I'm just gonna gank bot. But I'll tell you right now, most junglers, even like in silver and above, would recognize that this would be a very bad gank and they need to get their camps here, okay? Yes, most Zacks like to full clear. They will full clear to level 4 and then they will choose the safest crab possible away from enemy jungle or, you know, they will go for a guaranteed setup gank. Now, the next part I want just quickly to talk about before we finish this point is you think that they can gank. I actually think ganking this lane is possible, level 2 or level 3 or level, you know, when these guys are level 2 and when Zach is level 3. But the important thing to think about is where is the wave? And right now it looks like the wave is going to push towards Ash and Morgana if Ash keeps, sorry, towards Kaisa and Morgana if Ash keeps hitting it. So before you think Zach is going to gank bot lane, okay, if you, or rather if you're in the game right now and you're thinking Zach's going to gank bot lane after he does three camps, you actually need to double check. Can he even gank? Because look at the wave. This is an ungankable lane for Zach, right? And I could see that. Immediately, when I looked at the wave, I could immediately see that. I was like, yeah, he's never going to be gankable. So when you have an assumption like, hey, Zach can probably gank, you need to double check that assumption is accurate by looking at the enemy's wave, right? 
But anyway, let's move on. So you're uh, you're CSing and you're chilling. Okay, so you use level two to trade a little bit. That was a solid trade. TF doesn't react in time, and he's also um, lower on health potions, or rather, well, I mean, he's sort of lower on health potions. You use one, he use one. I think when your electrocute is up, I would actually be looking to trade again. But remember what we talked about, okay? So this is a part of the lane you would start leaning towards ball, okay? So that's just a quick point. You should start leaning towards ball here, probably. Because now you know Volibear didn't gank you from red buff, so he's definitely... Okay, so you see him top side of the map. Awesome. You have vision on volley. Mr. Scion burns his flash. And you're getting shoved in. Kind of looks like it's gankable as well. Okay. Couple things about this. Couple things about this. So Zach, First of all, Zach doesn't have E, so you should understand that Zach has no E, okay? Uh, yes, it, it, Pan has a very good point as well. So Zach E range is, you know, it's small. It's probably like this. Right, Zach E range is rather small. Maybe a little bit bigger, maybe something like this. Uh, but it's it's very small. Secondly, it's a very high cooldown. Okay, very, very, very high cooldown. So, I mean, it's on a 13 second cooldown right now. You can't see it because my camera's blocking, but it's on a 13 second cooldown and you, sh you should have just seen him use it on your on rate. So you'd be like, okay, he's probably not going to be able to gank now. So... What I would actually do here is just chill and not trade on TF. I wouldn't trade on TF. Because what you actually do by trading on TF is you force him back further. And then Zach actually can't gank from Wraiths. Which I think he could have. I think Zach could have actually ended up ganking from Wraiths. Right. And then second part of this is you do have to be careful because he has Flash Ignite. But you just mis misjudge your lethality. But in these situations, when you have Ignite, he has Ignite. You need to understand that he has the gold card, so therefore he has kind of precedence if he has card up. If he doesn't have card up, you can take a risk, but you just burned uh you just burned a bunch of your cooldowns, okay? So you don't have Q or your W. So I would just wait for Zach, okay? Just be patient. But yeah. Because you're kind of walking up expecting TF to run away, but TF actually does the right thing and flashes. Zach should flash for this and kill him. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, that was incredibly scuffed. I mean, it ends up working out, but that was <laughs> not the way <laughs> Zach should have played that. All right. So you're catching wave. You end up burning your TP. I don't think it's terrible to burn your TP here, but you do need to probably think about pushing the wave faster here. I think you should be pushing this wave ASAP. Okay. I don't think you can afford to stay in lane and not push. This TF is probably going to come back with more items than you. So you've, you've actually got no items right now. You have refillable and that's it. Uh, and Dark Seal. So I would prioritize fast pushing this wave before the next wave arrives. So you have a bit of time before this wave arrives. And you need to get this wave in ASAP. Otherwise, the wave is going to be here. That's what I'm calling is going to happen right now. Because you're not pushing fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I said, uh, this is the prime situation for you to get ganked. Profit raisins. Apologies, but... So you do get away from it, but again, you're losing a tremendous amount of farm. So you've missed one creep, two creeps, three creeps. Yes, you get... Okay, I'm going to try my best to not take this into account because uh, enemy Volibear walking into you guys completely blind with no TF should not, in theory, happen. <laughs> but it's still, good. it's still good that you guys get the kill. But like, what? what is this dude doing, bro? Okay, he, so he burns all his cooldowns. He has literally no cooldowns except W now. Yeah. I mean, little lesson for any junglers out there. Don't do that, you know? It was actually... Volibear actually already succeeded in doing his job, right? He pushed you off the wave. You missed four minions worth of XP and gold. He, he, was, he should have just been happy. He should have just been happy and taken that win, but I guess he got greedy. Is there an argument for not TPing there so you can get a quick recall in when you hit item timings? Um, that's a good question. I can quickly take a look. I think Katarina was probably going to miss maybe three or four minions if she didn't TP. Um, but we'll see. We shall see. All right. Okay, so a couple of things about this situation, actually. It's interesting. All right. So you're, you're, you're spending a lot of time deciding whether you should TP or not. 
you should have already decided that by the time you respawn okay so that's no point number one um you need to have already decided the whether you're gonna tp or not tp by the time you respawn okay um you need to basically just double check that you're actually tp'ing properly when you're dead look at the wave and be like okay i'm, I'm gonna pull the tp second thing here is you could actually have frozen you could have actually frozen and i'm not sure if yeah uh this is not actually that great a situation you could have just held the wave here for a bit internet explorer decision yeah it looks like you were alt tabbed almost or something like that or or were distracted maybe but you were standing in base for a little while doing nothing but then you start hard shoving the wave now hard shoving the wave i actually don't hate by the way i really don't hate why don't i hate hard shoving the wave because tf is actually he has no tp okay and he's being chased and he's just running around so i don't disagree with shoving the wave but first point is yeah just tp faster and then second point is like i said as soon as you get the stacked wave you need to realize okay tf is on his way back the next wave next wave is spawning now then this wave is a, is, is a big problem for you this wave is a big problem for you you have to solve this issue you can't have the wave stuck in front of the tower and exactly what i expected happens happens which is you get ganked and the enemy has a freeze it's not super good for you you know what i mean like this is this is like yikes right now for you super yikes uh but then volibear decides like you know what let's actually give katarina a kill because you know that would be fun i guess <laughs> he just decides to like yeah you'll get him next time bro you get him next time Vol. you'll get him so now you have a wave pushing into you because tf also very kindly pushed the wave uh, as you can see there's not a lot of wave management going on right now uh not a lot of thought is put into the waves but tf's pushing it's good pings it was good pings this was a dumb decision if he took that e so it was very good smart of you to ping him uh, if he went in there, it would have baited you in and maybe deep pushed the wave, which would be super bad. But look at this situation. You're managing the wave better than he is, and you're zoning him. Super good. Good stuff. Um, this was also around the time I would start thinking about potentially switching to Sweeper on your next back with a pink ward. So you can put a pink down on one side of the map, and then you can start sweeping whenever you roam, because you're close to six and you wanted to start looking for roams, right? Okay. So Zach is just basing. I mean, the Zack is wasting way too much time. He needs to be farming. He's level 4. It's it's almost 6 minutes in the game and your jungler is level 4. That's uh, definitely a bad use of his time. Okay. You're level 6 now. And you're holding the wave very nicely. This is good. This is good. You're just zoning him. You're 6. He's 6, but it doesn't matter if you 6 because you outplay him. Okay, so you know where Volibear is. Drake just went down. I'm happy with the with the state of this game. So the difficult part about this is if you start roaming, TF can follow with his R. Okay. So how do you deal with that, as Katarina? How do you how do you deal with that? Well, you have to understand that if TF R's, okay, to in response to your roam, number one, you know where he's gonna go. Nine times out of ten, he's gonna try and defend the the roam. Or if you see him following you, you know that he can't gank somewhere else. So it's actually not terrible. Uh, that he's following you and number two if you can get into the fight earlier and use your r before tf can use his r then it actually doesn't matter he has a lower impact than you because you're in the fight at the beginning instead of him coming in in the middle of the fight so if you choose the correct fights you should be able to like force tf to use his ult in bad situations but this is not that simple you know you need to be pretty aware on the map and you need to keep track of tf as a champ you don't remember roaming this game right fair enough Okay, Zach's using Sweeper. So you've got a slow push here, but TF is farming with his Q. Okay. We get a nice cheeky flash, but they get a kill in the ball lane. And you're just zoning. I really do think you should hard shove this wave. Really, really do think you should hard shove this wave. Okay, so a couple problems with you not hard shoving after Zach ganks there is number one he's gonna get a back in and he's actually gonna come back on the map faster than you and then you're not actually gonna be able to push the wave because he's out he's gonna have items and be able to like one shot the wave as you push it in and two you know where volibear is volibear is in bot lane right now uh and three you actually have no tp but you could just push the wave in and then walk back and you can save your tp for the next situation when you need it it's actually a beautiful time to push in base and uh you're sitting on 2k gold i should have mentioned that first actually <laughs> that's the most important part you're sitting on 2k gold so uh, I just want to quickly draw attention to this because he's going to come back to lane and I don't think you're actually going to 
Have a nice time. Yeah. Now you're actually going to lose farm. This isn't even a good gank because you're just... Yeah. We have been on Dark Seal plus refillable. Yeah. We have been on Dark Seal plus refillable for almost the whole game. So you can see how this bad wave management has now just cost you lane pressure completely. You are completely low on lane pressure. You have absolutely no way of stopping him from doing whatever he wants to do. And your kill threat is also very low. But Zach still might get a kill here. Okay, well you trolled there by by basically you should pay attention to your Zach eating here and uh and follow up with your ignites. Um definitely. I mean this guy's no flash, so you should be able to kill him even if he ignites you, you should be able to at least uh deal enough damage so that Zach can finish him off. Okay. But you now have acquired some farm and items and spent your gold. You are now much, much stronger than TF. Why are you walking away from the wave here is what I'm curious about. Why are we walking away from the wave? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't roam now. Don't, don't roam now. Oh, okay. Not a big fan of this situation where you walked away. I know you were looking for the roam, but this is probably the worst time that you could possibly roam. If you roam now, you're going to lose a bunch of... You were internet exploring. Yeah. You need to you need to be a little bit more decisive. You gotta be a little more fucking confident in yourself because in these situations, if you wanted to roam, you needed to roam earlier. Where where would I roam? I would roam here, maybe even earlier. This is probably too late to roam. Uh, you should probably. And the roam is not very good, to be honest. You're gonna lose too much farming ways, but it's possible. You're Katarina. It's not the end of the world if you roam. But I would roam insta. I would roam insta if you want to roam. But keep in mind, I'm gonna flip to your vision. You don't have good vision to roam. Okay, so then what do you do? Well, you just stay in lane and wait until your Zac finishes clearing, and then you do something. Or, use this time to put a pink ward down. Walk here and put a pink ward down. Uh, but, yeah, just the situation, it, it looks like a small mistake, but it ends up being kind of a big deal. Because you, this is basically a tempo killer. What you're doing right here is what I would call killing your own tempo. You're walking away from the wave, so not only are you giving TF the push, you're giving TF the push, he can start to chip away your towers, but you're actually just not killing the wave at all. Okay, which means the next wave is already just, the next wave is chugging along and it's about to arrive sooner. And you're going to have less time in between waves, which means you have less time to do anything you want to do. Even if you don't want to roam, you, have, you just have less time to do anything. You have less time to base, to move with your, with your jungle, whatever you want to do, right? So you should be trying to chip the wave down and thin it out and thin it out and thin it out because it's going to take you a bunch of time to kill these waves. Okay, so I don't know why TF, you know, uh, decides not to use his ult because I think that was a free ultimate opportunity and he should have just ulted bot lane. Um, whatever. But he gets a free base, which is the, the cost of us backing off on the wave. And you're TPing top. Okay. That was uh, interesting. Okay. Looks like this is just a. Uh, there's a lot of there's <laughs> there's a lot of crazy shit going on right now. Right, so you TP in and you back off. I actually I actually don't mind the insta back off, um, but the problem is I mean TF is losing a lot of farm here as well. But the problem is then the how we play it mechanically is a little bit wonky. So we go in here and Fury lands a good W. Yeah, this ult. I don't know. Not sold on the ult to be honest. Not super sold on the alt. Okay, so we do end up getting one kill and you go back into the jungle and you get a free volley barrel. That was good. And you go back mid and you push the wave. That was still, it was a good TP. Just mechanically, it was a bit like, <laughs> it was a bit janky the way we played that. That was a solid engage and you managed to, Zach kind of yoinks his combo. But you get another kill. Oh my god. And now the Katarina engages. And it's just like, okay, so... So th these... <laughs> so there's points in the game, right? There's like points during the game where you just... You just know the game is over, right? You're just like, if I... If I play this game from this point onwards correctly, the game is over. That's just how this works. And this is one of those points. The game is now done. So I, I want... I want you to... Talk about why... Like, or at least... Type in chat why you think I'm saying that now. 
from this point on, how are you going to end the game? Basically, like, what is, what is the way you're going to blow up the next from this point on when you're 5-1 in Katarina right now? You're also almost 30 CS up, which is, like, hilarious. That's crazy. Take bot lane out of the game. Well, what do you want to do as Katarina? Let's just start from step one, okay? Real simple. What, do you, what does Katarina do as a champ? What does Katarina do as a champion? Okay? She wants to team fight. She wants to team fight or skirmish, right? Rome, yeah, pretty much. You want to you get skirmishes, you want to get numbers advantage fights, you, wanna, you basically just want to fight in good situations and you want to be in large scale fights so that you can pop off and clean up. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you roam. Okay, how, do, how can you roam? Well, you have to deal with TF and the wave. The wave and the TF, and TF are the two things you need to deal with. Okay, well, how do you deal with them? Well, there's two options. You can either gank him or you can push him in and then roam. Now, this is less effective against TF because he has ult. This right now is super effective. This guy has no flash. Okay, so there's a very, very simple pattern from the second TF loses flash that you just basically say, I'm going to be able to perma gank bot now. As soon as TF loses flash, what do we do? So confusing that may I abbreviate Twisted Fate team fight the same way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So you gank, you gank TF and you push him under tower with Zach. Okay? Doesn't matter if Zach takes the farm. You gank him and you push TF under tower. When he has no flash, he cannot avoid the gank. It is un unstoppable. He can't do anything about it. And then you move with Zach into the enemy bot jungle. And what do they do? How do they play the game? You know what I mean? There should be no counterplay to this play because you have ticked, ticked all your boxes. Now, if TF then follows you in alt spot lane, okay? If TF then follows you in alt spot lane, what can you do? Like, what do you do if, if you, you and Zach roam bot and you four man bot lane here and then TF ults? Like, TF just joins. Hello, I'm TF. Look, it's TF. Oh, you can't see that because it's too close to the. Look, it's TF. He, he ulted bot lane. What do you do if TF ults bot lane? Free kill extra. You can dive him, Gundo Flash. You have a billion options, and I'll, I'll give you some suggestions, but it's really simple. If TF ults bot lane after you have just pushed in mid wave, you don't have to do anything. If TF ults defensively early in the game, like you can walk behind them here. And then TF will ult, and then you just walk away. <laughs> That's it. You literally just walk away. And TF has just burned his ultimate. You go back to your lane, you gank TF again, or you just push the wave in alone if he's scared and he doesn't get ganked, and then you do it again. And he has no ult. Literally, just, he, just, he has no way of stopping that. If you are strong enough, you can just dive. You can just straight up just dive. He has no flash. Right? And then if TF ults here and starts a fight, it's fine. If he ults under tower, it's also fine. You can back off. Uh, you can zone the enemy bot lane, but the point is, from this point on, the way you win the game is you call your jungler, you force TF under tower, and you move. Right? And you make him lose something every single time you move. Every single time you move, bot lane then also has to make some really, really tough choices. And from this point onwards, the game is over. I put a challenger one trick Katarina in this position, the game is over. They will not be able to uh, lose this game because the enemy team's champions have a very, very limited amount of windows where they can stop Katarina from doing things. Morgana's shield doesn't really do anything versus Katarina. TF ult is a very long cooldown. So you can just keep pressuring him in every wave, and eventually he's going to run out of options. He's just going to run out of ultimates. He's not going to be able to keep up. All right. Cool. So you're resetting to get items, and I think it's good. Finish your first item. Now you're coming on the map, and... Okay, so they get a gank off top lane. Yeah. So this, this one should have been pinged by you. You should have... Uh, let me flip to your vision real quick and let's just take a look. You actually have really good vision of this, by the way. What should you be pinging right now? As soon as he kills this wave, what should you be pinging? Put, basically, the way you play against TFs and you figure out where they're going to do ult is you put yourself in their shoes. You like think to myself, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm TF right now. I just killed the wave. Where would I go? Right? Where would I go? Would I go top? Maybe. Would I go bot? 
also maybe. But either way, you need to tell your team and you need to like ping, right? You have to ping. If I was TF, I probably would have gone top lane, not bot lane. But at the same time, like these guys do look a little bit like they're trolling. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is like, oh, yeah, enemy team gets everything. Enemy team gets first tower and bot. So you should try to try to preempt that and ping your team. Okay, you're pushing the wave. Your Zach's taking the wave because, you know, I guess he decides Lamal. It's not the end of the world, but you shouldn't have to let him take that wave. That was a dumb decision by Zach because you guys don't have tower damage. What should you have done after this wave? What should you guys have done after this wave? <laughs> Rate challenged Ash's play. What, what should you guys have done uh, after you, um, you take this wave? You thought Zach and I could instacle TF, right. But there's a big mistake. You're missing something. Okay, let's just flip to your vision. And look at the minimap. Just watch the minimap here. Did you see it? Did you catch it? There's like three different things that you should pay attention to on the minimap. If you notice either of them, any of them, not either of them, if you notice any of them, you would have not gone for this tower play. Number one, Bola Bear is rotating down here. He still has everything up. You should assume he does because Fiora, I mean, Sion probably should have pinged if Volibear used ult and all this kind of stuff. Generally, that would be, be, but you should just assume Volibear's coming. Volibear's like walked over a ward, so we should notice that. TF and Morgana have just walked over your minions and are walking up through river. You should also know this. So this was never going to result in anything. In fact, this is just going to result in you guys getting caught. And the last, the, the only way the enemy wins now is if they get your shutdown. If they don't get your shutdown, then you still have plenty of time to roam. Remember, TF ult is on a long cooldown. But right now, you have to... Like, you don't kill towers fast. So my, my question was, what play do you go for after this wave? And the simple play is, you are very strong with Zac. So I would just walk into bot river. If you can see Kai'Sa on the minion wave, I would just walk into bot river, and I would clear vision around here. Why would I clear vision around here? Just to stop Kaisa from easily, safely pushing this wave all the way in. And it would force Morgana and TF to stick around a little bit longer. You don't have to fight them, you just have to force them to stay. And they wouldn't be able to walk mid lane. They wouldn't be able to walk mid. Who would have to catch mid? Volibear would probably have to catch mid. That's not ideal. They want TF catching the wave, right? But the important part is you can't go top. Like, if you go top, you're just walking into... I mean, maybe you could, maybe, but she's gonna piss off by the time you get there. It's a waste of your time. She's going to kill these creeps very quickly and then just recall in here. I don't think you get there in time. So what I would have done was just go towards your vision. You have all these wards. Cover, cover the wave here. Make sure it's hard for Kaisa to push, right? But I'm going to predict you're going to die here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mean... Cool, you get the kill on TF, but you're worth 800 gold. You know what I mean? Like, you are your entire team's gold lead right now. It's not worth to do that. It's really not worth to do that. You feel like you're standing around, right. But sometimes standing... Maybe I should make a YouTube video about this, but sometimes standing around in where they don't have vision is actually the best way to pressure. You don't need to actively always be hitting towers. You don't need to always be walking into enemy jungle. Sometimes you can just pressure by walking into fog of war and kaisa can't push this wave anymore because you guys are on the, you guys are down a player remember in fact you were down two players you were down ash like ash was dead and pike was dead right if i just quickly go back just to replay that ash was dead and pike was dead so like you don't need to do anything on the map at that point just relax oh yeah sion was also dead so we were down three players well like i mean Sion, they're top laners who give a shit about top laners whatever dude um so you need to understand that like this is not a time to make a play, aggressive play, unless like it's a guaranteed kill uh, and you can get out as well. If it's a clean play that you can get in, get out and you see it, then go for it. Punish the enemy inters. But like you, you can't do anything proactive. And the more proactive you are when it's not your turn. OK, see what happens now is it's not your turn and you actually die and give up a pretty huge shutdown. So now when your teammates are actually on the map, let's just fast forward. Look. Your Ash and Pike have arrived, your Scion has arrived, you're dead for 20 seconds, okay? So for 20 seconds, when your team is actually ready to start making a play, when you could potentially start looking to roam or roam here or 
uh, move with like pike something like that you're not actually there to make a play which is a big deal because that's how gold games turn into shit shows because your teammates don't know what they're doing so they're just going to start doing dumb crap and then you don't know what you're doing because you're dead <laughs> and if you're dead you can't do anything interesting so the the coordinated plays if you don't have like a good plan it's just it just becomes very messy Organa didn't react in time. Also, that pie car was a bit interesting. Okay, it's fine. Your ball lane's playing good. They rotated. I mean, your pike seems to be smurfing it up. Landing every single hook. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad you guys didn't dive there, by the way. Holy crap, that, gave, that was a bit spooky. That was a bit spooky. So now you're a ball lane and you're pushing the wave in and this is fine now what you can do is push kaisa in she shouldn't be able to 1v1 you you just have to keep track of tfl that's the most important part of this if you keep track of tfl you're fine if you don't then you're gonna die but it is a bit risky for you to walk past this angle and push so what i would try to do is look mid lane and time it with whenever your ash is crashing the wave here and tf is stuck under the tower then you hit the wave right that's it you shouldn't just leave because of TF. You shouldn't just blindly leave and just run away thinking TF can always ult. He can't always ult. Remember that. He actually has to tend to the wave because they're about to lose a tower. It's not good for him to just randomly ult when Ash is about to push a wave. Second thing you should not be doing is recalling here. Okay? I, even though you have a lot of gold, this is a, a time when I think you should actually pressure the enemy. And how do you pressure the enemy here? Give me some suggestions on how you pressure the enemy. Good. I didn't even need to say it. You did it. Well done. No, staying bot there would be a big mistake. Staying bot there would be a big, big mistake. Going mid lane. It's that simple. You've pushed the wave in somewhat. You've semi pushed the wave in. Okay, you're going to lose some farm, but you need to make a play. You can't just sit around doing nothing. So you go mid lane and you pressure them off the tower. And if they int like that, if they stay forward, then you kill them. Good stuff. Yeah, staying, sitting in the lane ball lane and showing would not be a good call. TF would definitely also start looking to all you there. And they would know that you're uh, that you're chilling in bot lane, so they could play aggro mid lane as well if they wanted to. Not that they should win that, but yeah. Okay, I mean, another freebie. You are now 10-2-1. You are now 10-2-1. 11-2-1. Do I see more? Okay, um, I mean, it's actually good what you're doing on the map. As you're moving into these kind of areas, you need to start your sweeping. You have sweeper here. Uh, you're just walking over wards, which is actually reducing your team's playmaking potential quite a lot because they have full vision of your team. Start using your sweeper as aggressively as consistently as possible. Good, another freebie. Again, we're just walking over too many wards. You need to start using your sweeper. Okay, you're TPing top. I don't know how I feel about that. That's a losing play. I don't really think you should TP there. Um, your Scion is already 0-4. It's super pointless doing this, so it's never really going to do much. Uh, second thing is, uh, my idiot radar is going off down here. Um, when you when you walk mid lane, I can see on the minimap that your Ash and your Pike and your Zac are playing quite up in the lane. Uh, you just need to keep your idiot radar on and you need to understand that they can just, you know, start a fight at any time and it does not look like a... Did I see that right? Yeah, I saw that right. Okay. Yeah, I did see that right. That's a big throw right here. Um, but I actually think you could have potentially saved your TP. Uh, you shouldn't just tunnel vision on, oh, my top laner is getting ganked. Insta TP, insta TP, insta TP. You have to start evaluating the situation because 
again, this is one of those plays that it looks like a lot of players would be like typing right now and be like, wow, my ball ain't inted. Wow, they're, they're trash. Oh my God. But actually, yeah, they inted. But at the same time, let me go back to before you TP'd. Right here, they think you have TP, by the way. Right here, they're like, hey, Katarina has TP. And then this guy's like dead no matter what you do. So if you TP top, the, the ball in play still happens. So it's actually just a misplay by you. It's also ball in's fault. So they should insta back off. But look, as soon as you TP, as soon as you TP, TF sees this and goes in. It was actually smart by your TF. Or not your TF, I guess it's the TF. Like that, yeah. I mean, dude, dude straight ins it immediately. But like, it's smart by him. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that volley ult was... Uh... Put me, put me back a few years in development of my brain. What are we doing? Alright, so we get the tower, that's cool, but we've just burned two TPs on a 0-4 lane, and... Like, I feel like we don't need to. I feel like we can just group and start taking objectives. If you just start grouping, it's pretty hard for them to do anything. Okay, so you get Morgana Flash. Good sweeper there. And you clearing bot wave. You should. I wouldn't even go for this wave. Look at what's happening. Your idiot radar should be going off again. You're just running away from a free. F this game. This could just be game ending. You just. You're in this fight early. Game is over. You just win. You just clean up this fight. You get a pentakill and then you just go Byron. Uh, yeah, going for those three creeps was really bad. By the way, it was probably the only bad decision in that situation. rip well it's okay still very very straightforward game as long as we uh as long as we just stay together we just need to stick together this is not a game we need to over complicate by going side lane constantly 24 7 that's what the enemy team wants to do right perfect good stuff and then we're also simultaneously fighting here for some reason not sure why Okay, Morgana has no flash, and I think you know that. Good. And now you have 14 kills. I don't like how you're staying on the map. I think this is really bad. Yeah, you're dead. Okay, maybe not. Volibear into it. Why didn't he just walk around here? What? You should have died there, by the way. That was really greedy of you to stay on the map there. You have 700 gold shut down, and you should have just backed. You, have, you now have stopwatch and void staff. Holy crap, you're strong. Okay, so this is also a big mistake. You're making a big mistake here. What would you? What what should we be doing realistically? What what should we be doing instead of, uh, instead of this? I mean, this is just terrible lane assignments and bad setup from our team. What needs to actually happen here? Exactly. Yeah, this is completely backwards, and this is gonna. I can kind of see why you're probably gonna lose fights. You're just not gonna be in the fight. You're just straight up not gonna be in the fight. Secondly, you should probably match TF because you can absolutely one-tap this kid. Um, Fiora, I mean, you can one-tap her, by the way. You should still be able to beat her, but she's a level up and she's actually got some counterplay on you. And the, the bigger problem is they can, like, she can, sorry, not that arrow. She can shove you in under tower and she's already got a wave. So it's like, she's just going to run away. And like, you can't really do anything about that. At least with TF, you could probably chase. <laughs> Flashing in straight lines. Probably not a good call against Sion. Again, I really don't think you should care this much about this tower. Sion is probably going to die and then respawn or TP back to bot lane. We need you here to end the game. Like, this is just very, very bad lane assignments, and it's just going to slow the game down. Imagine if you were in this fight here or this fight here. The game would just be over. And Fiora would only just now be hitting the tower. And I don't care about, like, I'll, I'll give up this tower to get a free Nash. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll do that. If Fiora shows here and the, uh, the enemy team is trying to group, I'm just going to start Nash. Five man. We just go five man Nash. Nobody has to be ball lane. Why? Well, cool. Fiora gets in him. We get Nash. And then we just run it down ball lane and push Fiora all the way into tower. And then we just team fight them and end. And they, there's nothing they can do. You know what I mean? Keen32. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. So you do end up TPing. Okay. 
so you do end up noticing this and TPing. Uh, this was not a good stopwatch. I don't know what you're stopwatching here. I'm not sure why you were scared and stopwatched. Yeah, that was a bad stopwatch. Morgalt? Yeah, but you stopwatched way too early is my point. Keep channeling your alt and DPSing volley. You let volley walk in here. Just keep channeling your alt until, like, you need to be a bit more patient with your stopwatch there. Because nothing is DPSing you, No, nobody's hitting you. And then you swap aggro onto tower here. And who starts tanking? See, you actually get stunned almost exactly as you come out of your stopwatch as well, which is not good. But then this situation where you where you dash over here, also a little bit uh, a little bit too much. You have to re you have to remember when Volley has his W on you, he actually has a really good source of sustain. So if you don't burst him fast enough, he's just gonna keep healing up. Okay. I mean, your whole team is absolutely griefing it. Right. Yeah, your Ash is a good player. Well, at least she has solid aggressive tendencies, which is interesting. Okay. So instead of us being the ones to force Nash, I feel like maybe they will force Nash? Or maybe we do force Nash. Oh my god, we get Nash. No way do we get Nash. I mean, we should, but how do we lose? Alright, so we take the dragon. That was a good pick. Slion bases. They take tower. Oh, no, 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 no. Bad, bad, bad call, bad call, bad call, bad call, bad call. Insta Nash. Insta, you should be on Nash, okay? You need to damage it. Uh, this, you're gonna get cleaned up by TF ult, maybe. Were you doing a red buff? No, you just based, okay. I mean, you based, but then... Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, you're pushing. Ah, right. So, again, I mean, you, you did say that something like this would happen, but at the end of the day, I mean, it is what it is. Don't worry about it. But this situation, tell me, uh, tell me what you should have done instead, because you know what you did, but tell me what you should have done. I'm, I'm noticing a trend, by the way. For most of this game, if this is the map, if TF is here, you are here. So you're actually on the opposite side to TF, which is the opposite way it should be. It, sh it should be. It should be you and TF in one lane so that you can push TF under tower and pressure TF. Right now, there's actually nobody on your team who can pressure TF at all. Scion gets pushed and beaten by TF. Um, Technically, you could, they could, he could get ganked, but I don't think it's as scary as if TF is in, into Katarina, right? So you're just going on the opposite side of the map where you should be pretty much consistently. Um, and you, you, the way you can notice this is bad is you know that TF is going to show bot lane because, like, first of all... Okay, wait, hold on. You see him somewhere. Let me see. Right. So you see TF passing bot with your, with your vision here. You actually see a little bit of uh, TF walking bot. Then... We see him. Do we see him here? Okay, we don't end up we don't end up catching him, but then you see him here. Second you see him here, we swap and you go ball lane here. There's actually no pressure, there's no threat right now to top tower, top in him. Just punish this guy, go ball lane, push it all the way out and force him under tower. You don't actually have to because it this is your worst matchup going into Volibear or Fiora, one of those two. Okay, if Cyan had hit that ult, TF would have actually had, uh, probably died there. Yeah. Yeah. How did- I mean, your Ash is 1v9 this now. Ah. Right. 
That's awkward. And I'm assuming we're gonna lose one more fight. Game is still fine, by the way. You're still ahead. If you just team fight and group in 5v5. Okay. Uh, we, we managed to catch TF, which is like, what the hell? How? Okay, now the game is legit over. Now the game is just over. We just group mid and just walk the game in. How do we lose now? I'm so confused. We're gonna get back to it, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Ash is... Oh, no. Wait, how do we lose from here? They don't even get the back door off. Oh my fucking god, she won me twos. <laughs> okay. Why are we at their top tower? Why aren't we just pushing? Why are we chasing? The game is about to end if we just... What is going on? Why... It's a Morgana, bro. Who cares? <laughs> Just end the game. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're, they have two players dead. Their Volibear here has no ultimate. So he literally, he's squishy as hell. You guys will one-shot him. These guys, even if they get 1v2, you should, you should be able to, like, stop them from doing anything. And if Morgana walks up to clear the wave, then you go on her. Right? Your priority is this. You know? You're giving them what they want by chasing here. Oh. Also, another another point. You shouldn't. Oh, there's no reason to Zonya's to stun there. You know, there's no reason to Zonya's to stun. Your your Zac was actively tanking the tower. There's nothing else. To, uh, no DPS. There's no DPS at all that is coming your way. So there's actually no reason to Zonya's to stun there. Yeah. All right, well, this is a rough one. I can see why you're feeling a bit rough after this one. Can we put an F in chat for Silk, everybody? Try and cheer Silk up a bit. It's a bit of a rough one. The game still isn't over, by the way. It's still super winnable. It's actually, unironically, still winnable. I mean, it's a harder game. Thank you for your service, though. Appreciate the content, Silk. Thank you. Onichan 9000. Thank you very much. Well, we got the Fiora, Pog. Yeah, Volibear is a little strong. GG. GG. Well, yeah, that was a game and a half, wasn't it? Sheesh. All right. Well, I think in terms of macro, I think you were chasing sidewaves a little too much, that's for sure. I think one thing you can definitely remember is try and figure out what your win condition is. And in this game, you were never going to win side lane, right? They have a Fiora into Scion and a TF into Katarina. Now, yes, you can kill TF on side lane, but first you need to match him, right? First first step is if you do want to catch waves on side, you got to go into TF. You don't, you don't have to go into Volibear or Fiora. And then the second part of that game is... Um, you need to identify that, like, even if you go into TF, like, that's playing into what the enemy wants, right? If you if you match TF on side, then TF can ulti away from you. He can just push you under tower and ult away. Or Fiora can just play one versus one into Scion and be happy. But if you group as four with a Zac and an Ash and ulti, the enemy team is going to have to respond because you can engage on them in three or four different ways. You can engage on them with Ash W into Zaki or Zaki or, uh, you know, even you just jumping on their, like flanking them, Ash Arrow, Pike Q. Like they have to do something about that. And you need to force them to come to you rather than you chase them around the map because the enemy team comp is Fiora TF. They want you to chase them around the map, right? That's, that's how they win. So it was probably just a... Um, identifying your win conditions and you know figuring out like whether or not actually you um you need to chase these waves on sides or if you just need to stick it to the enemy and just aram it down down mid lane you know what i mean not sure if you should be more depressed or less depressed be less depressed be less depressed because you've learned <laughs>